So the next idea in object-oriented programming is inheritance. So the first type of hierarchy was embeddable objects. That's not inheritance. Literal objects inside of other objects is a hierarchy, but it's an embeddable hierarchy. However, the other type of hierarchy is inheritance. So with inheritance, you have two separate entities. Now these entities are classes. Now these classes share a relationship and that relationship means that a class will inherit properties and methods from another class. So let's take a look at a real world example. So firstly, we're going to have a bank account class. It has a balance, an APR rate and an account number. Plus it will have the withdraw and deposit methods. Now I have, let's say, an ISA type account. Now I may create another class to demonstrate an ISA account because an ISA account isn't like a standard bank account. It also has a time period in which you're allowed to withdraw certain funds from the account. And also this account type comes with additional beneficial services. And also it has the penalty method. That's because if you withdraw funds, and you break the time period that you're allowed to take out funds from the account, you will incur a penalty. Now, as I write these side by side, I can see similarities. I can see a little pattern. ISA still has an APR rate. It still has a balance property. It still has an account number and it still has the withdraw and deposit methods. So what do we do here? Well, we go back to the number one golden principle, abstraction. And that's exactly what inheritance allows us to do. It allows us to simplify our application via inheritance. So inheritance is having a nice relationship with another class. And I can do this here to simplify my code, making it lighter and more maintainable instead of having duplicate code. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, let's get rid of all the duplicated properties and methods in the ISA class. Now, all we have in the ISA class is the unique properties and the unique method to do with the ISA account. Now, what I can do is draw an arrow between the ISA class and the bank account class. This way, I demonstrate that there is a relationship between these two classes. They are linked. Now I'll explain more about this diagram right here, but it's very, very simple. And we'll look at UML at a later date. But right now you're looking at a simple UML diagram that represents classes and relationships with classes and so forth. So now what this diagram is telling me is that when I instantiate, meaning create an object from a class, when I instantiate the ISA class, what it will first of all do is look at the most important class. This is usually referred to as the super class. It may also be called a parent class. Likewise, ISA is the sub class or the child class, whatever name you want to give it. But our program looks at the class hierarchy and it comes immediately to the parent class and it will generate an object with those properties and methods. But then also it says we're not done creating this object. We also want to grab all of the properties and methods from the sub class or the child class and add those into the object as well. And then once it's gone all the way down the hierarchy and finished, the object is returned. It's given back to wherever we want it to be placed in our code. But it generates an object based on the hierarchy of classes. Now you can also have multiple subclasses that inherit from the same class. For example, let's say that I need another class to resemble a debit account. Now a debit account comes with a debit card. So I need to store additional unique properties for this type of account. 
such as the card number, security code, and the PIN number. Now, a debit account also has the exact same things as a regular bank account, such as account number, the APR rate, and a balance, and you can also withdraw and deposit money into a debit account. So, what I can do is create a subclass, which is the debit class, and it will inherit all of the standard properties and methods that a regular bank account has with the addition of those unique properties that are to do with a debit account, such as the card number, security code, and the PIN number for the card. And if I was to call the debit subclass, again, it will go to the highest order in the hierarchy, the most important class, which is the bank account class, that's the parent or super class, and it will generate an object from that template, and then also it will say we're not finished yet, there's still another relationship, a link here, so now go to my debit subclass, and from there it will again add in those additional properties to the object that has been generated from the superclass. Now we have our object and that will be returned to our program. Now you can go even further with inheritance. Now I don't actually recommend going any further than a standard relationship like this. However, some circumstances do require this. So let's take the example of three classes. Now if we have three classes and we say instantiate the very last subclass, what we are doing is we are creating an inheritance path and the program will follow along that inheritance path, that hierarchy of classes, and it will create an object. So for example, we have the first class in our inheritance path and that's where our program begins walking on the path. So it goes right there and it builds an object from that initial class. And then it walks a little bit further down the inheritance path and then it comes to the next class and it adds additional properties and methods from that class. And if it's still got a bit more walking to do, it will walk and walk and walk until it's finally finished and comes to the very last class on the path. And then it will add in those additional properties and methods. Once it's finished walking that inheritance path, it will produce an object and that object is returned to your program. So that is inheritance in a nutshell and it allows abstraction. So instead of rewriting the same properties and methods over and over and over again, what we can do is we can generalize and say, look, I've noticed a pattern. I'm repeating a lot of these properties and methods. So what I want to do is create a super class and then I want to have multiple child subclasses, for example. And so this can either occur naturally or you can find this pattern later on as you're programming and say, look, I'm repeating myself a lot here, so I need to create a super class. Either way, you are creating more maintainable code via inheritance.